Hi, everyone. This is Renee Rentmeister. I'm the creator and executive producer of the Cooking Without Looking TV show and podcast. And today we have a wonderful guest. He's a friend of one of our other guests. His name is Casey Schofield. Casey, how are you doing? Renee, I am doing fantastic. And I hope you are the same, my friend. I am. I am as well. Well, that sounds great. And you even sound fantastic. It's not like you're like, you sound a little down and like, oh yeah, I'm fantastic. You do sound fantastic. I, I've had three cups of coffee, so I am doing <laughs> grand. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Casey, tell us a little bit about yourself and about your blind living experience. So um, I was actually born three and a half months early. I was born at the 27 week mark. Um, according to my birth certificate, I was supposed to be born May 21st. Uh, my birthday is actually coming up. I was born February 25th. Um, I will oh, be wow. 34 this year. So there's that very, uh, very lucky, very fortunate. I, um, I wasn't supposed to live, to tell you the truth. Uh, when I was born, my lungs and heart were both underdeveloped. I had a hole in my heart. And they were going to life flight me to um, uh, a special hospital to surgically fix that hole. But on the day they were going to, it closed up. So uh, well, that's that miraculous. is... <laughs> yeah. Um, I, um, my blindness was caused by, um, uh, I had to be incubated, uh, because of my lungs being underdeveloped. I had to be given excessive amounts of oxygen. <clears throat> and, um, as, as a result of that oxygen exposure, that's what, uh, that's what damaged my eyesight and caused my blindness. Well, you know, Casey, this has been going on a long time. Like the people who were born in the 50s and 60s often went blind and, and Stevie Wonder as well from um, too much oxygen. Don't you think like by now, <laughs> all these years later, they would they would like know better? You know, I I think I. I can't say because I, I I don't know what all goes into that, but I I think um, I think it would be a lot less common today um, as to how I was born. I think it would be a lot less common that that would happen today, as far as my understanding goes. But I mean, again, I'm you know I'm not a part of the medical field, so I I I really don't know for sure. That's just kind of what. I was informed of, so I, I can't really say, right. but you would think, I mean, I mean, heck, you know, we're in 2024. So oh, right. exactly. And I've talked to like other people like your age as well. And they've, they've had the same experiences and I'm like, but you know, all of the people or a lot of the people who went blind in the fifties and sixties, that was a reason because the incubators were new at that time. But like right now, I don't know. I just get baffled by, you know, that's one of those little things that like make me think and go, wow, they haven't fixed that. You would think they would. I mean, and you know, like I said, I, I, I don't know what advances have been made in that field. That's not my area. Right. But I mean, you would think that it would be less common now, but I mean, who, you know, who sure. really knows? Sure, exactly. So what exactly do you see now, Casey? So <clears throat> I remember when I was a little, little kid, I had contacts. And from what I can remember, I could see colors a little bit when I was really little, you know, but you got to understand I was maybe two, maybe three. So I'm not really even certain if what I was seeing is color because I was so young. Um, right now, I see light and shadows, like light and like, you know, I mean, I can see my walls and things, but I, I don't see anything in any sort of detail visually or color or anything like that. I just know that there's something there. Um, 
and I can only see out of one eye. As a matter of fact, I uh, um, when I was born, I I had a degenerative eye disease. There's a term for it, but I don't know exactly what it was. Um, as I got older, my my left eye became cloudy, and it became slightly smaller than my other eye. And I mean, it looked like I had a permanent cataract. Mm -hmm. And over time, as I got into my 20s, I noticed that my vision started to decline on my left side. But it happened so gradually that you, you know, you would never know. And then I, I remember like it was yesterday, I was living in this very apartment. It was 2016. It was um, right after Easter. It was maybe mid-April. And I'm standing over my sink doing dishes. And uh, you know how sometimes you just kind of instinctively just reach up and touch your face? Just like for no reason. Right, you just, right. You know, you just do it without thinking. Well, I kind of reached up and touched my eye because it was kind of itching a little bit. And I noticed there was a like a sore. It almost looked like a cold sore on my eyelid. And I was like, huh, that's that's funny. Within two days, um, it looked like I had pink eye. My eye was red and sore, and it was, you know, gushing real bad. And I thought it was just pink eye, okay? Right. So I went to a walk-in clinic, and I got some drops to clear it up. And it did clear it up. I mean, it may very well have been pink eye. I, I don't know. But what it did was it started a chain reaction. And over the summer of 2016, I started to notice, hey, man, you know, I'm not feeling very good. And there were there were hours out of the day when I I I would be really tired and I'd have to lay down. And uh, we get to October. We're now in October of 2016. And I wake up one morning and. You know, I hadn't even drank or anything the night before, you know, it, it, you know, it, you know, it was just a, you know, just a regular night, just, you know, you know, had dinner and, you know, hung out with some friends for a while, you know, and went to bed. Well, I woke up next morning and I had the cold sweat, you know, like, you know, the cold, like, oh, wow. Yeah. And I had a really high, like really bad fever. And I'm like, you know, wait a minute, what's going on? You know, and my eye hurt really bad. And uh, from that point on, for the next maybe month and a half, I just like, I mean, I, I, I was really sick and my eye was hurting really bad. And uh, my sister, actually, my older sister, she was going to move out to Vegas. <clears throat> and she asked me, she goes, well, can I come over and have dinner one night? Because I, you know, I don't know when I'm going to see you again, because... You know, I'm going to go out to Vegas and she she came over and she she was a beautician at the time. So she was cutting my hair and she goes, so what's going on? Are you OK? And I'm like, well, Chris, I, you know, I'm not feeling very good. She goes, what's going on? And I said, well, my eye has been hurting really bad. And she goes, let me see. And she pulls back my eyelid and my eye is black it's oh it's God. it's yeah yeah it's 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 red and black and like there's no pupil it's it's just black yeah i mean it looks i mean it looked nasty and she goes when's the last time you went to see a doctor and i said oh it's been about 10 years she goes what and we we booked an appointment um, ASAP for uh, the Moran Eye Center, which is our eye specialist uh, facility here in Utah. It's in Salt Lake City. And we 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 went down there and we did a whole bunch of tests. <clears throat> and like I said, there's a term for it. I don't know exactly what it is. But uh, the doctor basically told me, he goes, son, you're in bad shape. And I go, what do you mean? And he goes, we need to remove your eye right now. Like as soon as, I mean, you're in emergency surgery territory. Oh my God. And I said, 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was bad. What 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 was happening? Did you know they can do ultrasounds on your eyes? I did not know that. Yes, they can. And what they found was that the innards of my eye were dead and they were decomposing in my socket. Ew. And what was happening was my eye was calcifying. Like it wasn't even an eye anymore. It was just this black mass of dead tissue. And he, he said, what, what can happen here is you can have a stroke, a brain aneurysm or a heart attack. Because when I would just get up to go to the bathroom, just, you know, down the hall, I mean, it felt like I had ran a marathon, you know, and God. they, they, they told me, they said, you know, and this is uh, the beginning of December. And they said, we are going to book your surgery for January 13th, 2017. Because, you know, we want you to enjoy your holidays. But he goes, you are in for a long, long road of recovery. And um, January 13th, they performed what is called evisceration eye removal surgery, which is where they where they basically open up your eye and they, I mean, they hollow it out like a squash. I mean, they they just, you know, they just take out everything, all the innards, everything. And they, and they implant a 20 millimeter ball it's um it's a ball with holes in it so that all your nerve endings can grow back through and they sew everything up and they put a conformer in the front and now i mean i would consider myself a tough guy okay but the the levels of agony that i had to go through for the first year and a half was levels that I would not wish my worst enemy on. It, it was absolutely horrible. I mean, I can't even imagine. Oh, oh my God. It, it, it was so terrible. I, it, I mean, day and night, I slept maybe two hours a night for the first three weeks. My eye was so huge that I couldn't wear sunglasses. I, I had to wear metal shop safety goggles goggles when i went out in public because it stuck out like an inch past my nose oh my god well casey did you have a job at this time what was going on in your life well so honestly at the time i was a bit of a wild child um <laughs> i i loved to party i loved to partake in alcohol and other substances and uh you know i like to have fun you know i mean i was a rock star i lived like a rock star and i enjoyed it i loved it but that was kind of what woke me up to the fact like hey man you're mortal and you need to slow down because this almost killed me it, and the reason it almost killed me is is because I'm one of those guys, I'm one of those man's man, like, <laughs> I'm going to chew up Tylenol and just take it, you know? I'm fine, you know? But the take truth is, is, you know, the truth is, is I was not fine, you know? Oh. You know, it's, it's, you know, kind of one of those things where, you know, your pride really needs to get out of the way. Exactly. Well, so um, what do you do now? Uh, are you are you working? Tell us a little bit about that. So I actually am working. Um, I work for Amazon. Um, I am in the packing department. Uh, now, to be clear, I'm not actually working at the moment. Um, I was hired on to Amazon on the 18th of October, but because they weren't quite ready for uh, the visually impaired, they have to have stations that are equipped for the visually impaired. Um, they didn't have that ready yet. So they sent me home and they pay me my four 10 hour days every week. Um, I get paid every week, um, which is very nice, but I'm mean, not. The... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But me, I'm not the kind of guy. I'm kind of old school. I, I would much rather be working right. than just hanging out. I mean, you know, it's been nice to hang out, but 
I I just can't sit and do nothing. I've got to be out there. I've got to be working. I've got to be doing things, you know. And I I um I originally wanted to start work in 2017, but I I just for for the next couple of years, you know, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, I just, you know, I mean, I had some health problems and I, you know, I I that's kind of what prevented me from uh working um you know and keep in mind you know up up to that point i was very healthy you know i was a young guy and then all of a sudden you know i had this problem with my eye and then a year into uh my eye recovery um i had a cancer scare and i had to have my left testy removed it turned out to not be cancer but I mean, those those first couple of years after were very rough years. So it kind of, you know, pushed things back a little bit. But by the time we got to like late 2019, you know, I was, you know, I was good again. I was ready to roll, you know, and but you know, that, you know, that whole, you know, getting back into working, I mean, that's a whole nother story of its own. I mean, because well, it's you- very challenging. Have you ever found it um, difficult um, to find a job as a person with visual impairment? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. And I can tell you that story if you'd like. Sure. Um, I, you know, because I believe that it's very important for blind people to know that um, while, while I absolutely believe that we should be working, we need to be working, you know, we need to be getting out there. Um, don't expect it to be an easy road to get into the work field. Uh, you know, and of course that all depends on what you want to do, but, uh, um, I had a very difficult time getting into the work field. Um, I did, um, I, I started out doing an apprentice gig actually. Um, I worked for a custom hat shop, uh, for a little while. And I mean, I did it as, you know, kind of, you know, volunteer work. Yeah. I wasn't actually paid, but I mean, it was definitely an experience. I wasn't that good at it. That's because you're asking me, but I mean, you know, I, I can say that I did that. And then, um, I, uh, I got hired on at, uh, enable industries. That is a disabled workshop out here where I live. Um, it's for disabled persons. I, I I was hired to work in the wood shop out there. They made framing for PVC pipe transport. Um, I worked on a drill press with a rounded blade, and uh, that was a lot of manual labor. And that's kind of the kind of work that I really enjoy doing. I'm you know I'm the kind of guy you know I'll wear a cowboy hat or you know baseball cap, steel toed boots. You know, I mean I'm a manual labor kind of guy. <laughs> Well, you know so, what? I think I think that there might be a couple of people in the audience who maybe takes a huge heaving breath thinking about a visually impaired person dealing with a, a saw <laughs> with the with the uh, with the wood and everything. How did that work out for you? Um, actually, worked out very well. I I I was very good at it, but it's because I had a background in it. Um, when I was nineteen, I attended some courses at our um, adult training center here in Salt Lake City. And one of those classes was a wood shop class and my instructor was blind. And oh. yeah, and his 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 thing was if you know how to do it safely and properly, you will never get hurt. Now I I disagree with one part of that statement. Um and I'll tell you this anybody can get hurt at any time because accidents are you know it's 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 just human nature you know they can and they will happen but when you're working with power equipment you have to treat that equipment with the utmost respect and caution because you know one accident can change your life um now i'm very fortunate that i never um had an accident i mean i've had some you know a mishap here and there, but I've never had an accident. I've never been hurt on a job. And I feel very fortunate about that. That's good to know, Casey. (laughs) Wow. That's amazing. Well, tell us about your venison chili that that's intriguing. Tell us about it and then just give us the recipe. Sure. Sure. So, um, 
in uh, 2022, I was hired on to work at Lowe's here in Ogden. It's a local, uh, it's our uh, local store. It's about, you know, five minutes from my house. Um, and at the time, uh, Lowe's had a chili cook-off that they would do on Halloween. And I was invited to take part in that. And uh, I thought, you know what? I'm going to go above and beyond because I love cooking. I mean, I've loved cooking since I was nine years old. I originally started learning from my grandma. And that was one thing I got really good at because I just, I mean, cooking is an art form. Yeah. You know, and it's not hard. You, no. you know, you just have to, you know, practice makes perfect. I mean, I failed more times than I can count, oh, but. I, I think in, in people make the mistake of following a, a recipe so closely. And really, that's that's sort of just the, the framework. If if you have to put your thoughts into it and everything. Oh, definitely. So with this chili, you know, I thought about it for a couple of days and I looked up some recipes and I thought, you know what? I'm going to kind of just experiment, you know, because at this point, you know, I mean, I'm... 32 years old at this point. I mean, I've been cooking since I was maybe 14. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this. So I bought um, a brisket flat. And for anybody who doesn't know, um, a brisket is, um, it is uh, essentially the, um, it is the pectoral muscle uh, from the cow. Um, it's, a, I mean, it can be a huge piece of meat. I mean, it can range from, eight pounds to 12 to 15 pounds it's a dude, huge wow. piece of meat yeah so i bought a brisket flat which is essentially the lower half of the brisket and um i threw that in the oven for about four and a half hours and um while i was doing that um i got out my dutch oven and i browned the ground venison and then here's where things get fun <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so um i used a combination of chicken stock and evan williams bourbon whiskey i to, saw that yeah to 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 uh make the initial um broth and then you um you add in your ground meat and I use, oh, let's see, I use a can of Pinto and a can of kidney beans. Uh, but oddly enough, I don't add my beans right away. The beans are actually later. Um, but what I do is um, I will chop up a green bell pepper and a red bell pepper. I'll add that in. I'll add in an onion. And I will add in three or four tablespoons of minced garlic because you have to remember you're making a lot of chili. Um, I slow cook all this in an Instapot and they're about eight to 10 quarts. So, yeah. you know, you're making a lot. Um, and plus, you know, Lowe's had about 100 employees. So, you know, you're cooking for a lot of people. Um and I let's see, I would add uh, canned green chilies, um, a large can of stewed tomatoes, including the juice. Um, I would add in uh, one or two cans of corn. I would usually go with uh, just the one just to be safe. Um, and then you you let all this uh, simmer on the stove. Um, in your Dutch oven, covered, of course, for about four and a half hours. Now, the spices you add to this. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. So you you have to kind of add as you go because while you're cooking this, you know, things can evaporate, things, you know, cook in. So you got to make sure that you're adding your right blend of spices. I use chili powder, black pepper. Um, a little onion powder, and I'm a big fan of Creo seasoning. So I use a little bit of Creo. Now you gotta 
be a little careful with that because it's very salty and very garlicky. Is it Creole? So, Creole or Creole? Creole. Huh. It's Cajun seasoning. Oh, okay. That's why I thought it was Creole, but okay, it's Creole. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's 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 uh Creole seasoning comes in a big uh like cardboard can. Oh, okay. Um and once you let all this do on the stove for about four and a half hours in your in your Dutch oven. I use the Dutch oven, you know, because it's thick and heavy, keeps everything heated and you know, all that. Well, then I will take my brisket out of the oven when it's done. Um, and you shred the brisket. You cut it up as small as you can. Um, just try and you know, try and be careful not to eat it. I mean, it's tempting. I know it's tempting, You've son. Got the brisket Don't. and the whiskey there. You you have a party already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then I will add the brisket to the Instapot. You have to use the Instapot because I don't have a big enough crock pot for all that. Sure. Um, so I would add the brisket in the bottom. I would pour in the what I call the sauce. That's all your stuff you're, you know, you have in your, um, in your Dutch oven. And then you add the, all the beans on top. That's one can of Pinto and one can of kidney. And you stir all of this together. Um, and you have to make absolutely sure that it's all mixed together. I'm, I'm, I'm very detailed. I'm very, very particular. So I have to make sure it's done right. And once you stir all this together, you're going to put this on low in your Instapot. And this has to slow cook for up to 16 hours. Whoa. And yeah, yeah. Oh, and I, I did forget to mention you want to add a second onion into this. Because when you're making this kind of chili, flavor is the absolute key. Flavor is the absolute key. So this this is going to cook for up to 16 hours. Now, just to give you an idea of how good this chili was, three people tied for second place in that chili competition. I was one of those three. Wow. Yeah. How many people so, were in the whole competition? I believe there were... There were 10 different chilies, if I recall correctly. Eight to 10 different chilies. Whoa. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, it is, it is the best chili in the world. I mean, well, we, I'm sorry. Oh, we had so much left over that I would freeze it and we'd unthought, we'd pour it over baked potatoes. I mean, we, it's, it's so heavenly. It is heavenly. Sounds, I mean, it sounds like that. We had this discussion before we got on here, but okay. So where do you get your venison and maybe where can others get their venison? So honestly, venison is not something that you can just go into a store and buy unless, and this is merely an assumption Unless you have like a meat only store, like a champion meats or something like that, or like, say, if you know a local butcher, because elk and venison, all that stuff, it's what's called wild game meat and wild game isn't readily available. You have to either special order it or you have to wait for the particular hunting season to be able to get it from somebody and um so like i said um it's not always readily available and if if you are purchasing it you're gonna pay a lot of money for it because you know again it's not common you know it's not you know it's not like you you know you just go down to the local you know store and you know buy some hamburger now why do you use the venison how did you decide to use the venison and the brisket together. What how what went into that decision making? Um me personally, um, I'm I'm very I'm very um I'm one of those kind of people like if I'm gonna do something, um, 
I want to do it as as well as I possibly can, and I want to make it as as top quality as I possibly can. And with the combination of both of those meats, I mean, you're using very high quality meat, you know, from the you know from the ground venison, which isn't something that is very common, like I said, and the brisket, which I mean is easier to obtain sure but but i mean brisket's not cheap and no. it's not it's not easy to prep i mean if you don't know how to prep a brisket correctly you can really mess things up so you have to be you know you have to be very skilled to be able to pull it off the right way now how did you decide, or maybe I know this answer already, how did you start, decide to put the whiskey in there? Um, <laughs> The whiskey, well, aside from whiskey being a meat tenderizer, you can use it to break down meat. Um, It's just for flavor. It's just, you know, for a little bit of flavor. Uh, the alcohol would most definitely no. cook out of it. I mean, it's it's, you know, it's more to just kind of give it a little bit of a kick. Well, that sounds amazing. Well, and if anyone wants to, um, I'm sure many people are going to run out for this because it's a very distinctive type of chili. Um, you can go to our website. It's a www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. And this recipe is going to be up there and you'll just bowl your friends over with this brand new kind of chili that no one else makes. Right, Casey? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> I will tell you what, uh, you will make a lot of friends uh, making that chili. I can tell you that. Uh, my girlfriend's family, it, I mean, that's their favorite. Every Halloween, Casey, like Emily, tell your boyfriend to make chili. <laughs> oh. well so that is what i do every year well casey if people want to reach out to you how do they how do they contact you so um i am on twitter well x i guess as they call it now uh oh, my <laughs> handle is is casey 335 uh that's uh capital c-a-s-e-y two threes and two fives or uh, I'm on Facebook. Um, I'm Casey Schofield. It's C A S E Y S C O F F I E L D. Um, I'm also on TikTok and YouTube. Ah, that's great. And do you have any parting words for our audience? You know, my friends, I do. And I will say this. I understand that there are a lot of blind people out there, a lot of people with a visual impairment who have a fear of the stove and who have a fear of cooking. And I want to tell you this, my friend. It's all right to be afraid. But what I will say is this. If you let your fear hold you back, you will never accomplish your dreams, my friend. Live, live. Seek your fulfillment. And if you're not happy where you are, only you can change that. You have to overcome your fears in order to climb higher and please keep climbing higher nobody nobody wants you to reach for those stars more than i do so live without fear and keep climbing my friend oh thank you so much casey and, and that could be for anyone that's a great message for everyone isn't it it is it is because I mean, look man you know life can be scary Absolutely. You, you know, and especially if you're living with a disability that that, you know, gives you a huge disadvantage in life. But, you know, that you, you know, that um, that disadvantage can be a huge advantage if you know how to use it properly. And 
use it properly, use it with good morals and good intentions, and you'll be okay. You will be just fine. Well, Casey, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, I really appreciate it. It's been a wonderful amount of time. I, you know, it's it's been very enjoyable. I feel like I've known you all of my life. And, um, <laughs> and for any of you, again, please um, contact us. You can go to our website, www.visionworldfoundation.com. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. I jumped ahead of myself. And if you love what you heard today and all of our content, um, please go to the top of our Facebook page and you're welcome to gift us anything you can. Everything helps us uh, continue to help uh, change the way we see blindness. And um, if you want to sponsor our show or our podcast, please reach out to me. It's uh, 305-200-9104. And again, thank you so much, Casey, for helping us change the way we see blindness. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for having me.